Danny probably is. I wanna I think it's just rock and roll. Rock and roll that takes many different forms. And we like to try and be pop, and we like to try and be folk sometimes, but it's just a free for all. Danny probably was, and is, at its core, Danielle Capalbo, and her tremendous songwriting ability, and uh, powerful voice. Initially, she was performing as Danny probably, uh, solo, and asked me to play on some drum tracks, got involved that way, started playing regularly together, and here we stand today, a three-piece rock group from Connecticut, who'd have thunk? <laughs> my family was a band my whole life, <laughs> and it was like a Motley crew, not the Motley crew, but a Motley crew. It was like my mom is the lead singer, my father is the bass player, my mom's brother is the lead guitarist, so it was like a family affair. I think I picked up a guitar around 13 when the violin was no longer like practical. I didn't really care so much about playing guitar well, I just always was writing songs. She has an ability to, while performing, I've always said that people wanted to either be her or be with her. When she's on stage, she just has this ability to draw people in. I mean, her voice is crazy. Like, her range is, is huge. She's a really raw, powerful performer. Danielle is a prolific songwriter. She churns out songs uh, from the heart or even from various perspectives. She's just such a well-rounded songwriter in every sense of the word. Really unique chord progressions. I don't wanna be a cowboy, but I wanna Cowboy was a song that Danny had written, and from the first moment I heard it, I'm like, that's a total earworm. That song is super catchy. Cowboy, that song rips. I describe it as if Lady Gaga met Modest Mouse. Between like the bass line and the, uh, the choruses, and it has a very, I mean, it's called Cowboy, so there's moments of it that almost feel kind of country western. To me, Cowboy is a breakup song, but without, the vitriol. It's a song about accepting when something has run its course. And um, it's kind of like a no harm, no foul, no hard feelings, uh, but I got to mosey out. So Verso Studios offered us this opportunity to work with Peter Cadis. It was mind boggling because Peter has worked on records that really shaped my life as a musician, my sense of sound, the sorts of things that I love to listen to and experience with a song, and has worked with artists that I consider role models. I can't, I can't even not talk about this without smiling, but um, Peter Cadis has produced uh, or mixed or been a part of some of my favorite records. And when this opportunity came up, I kind of didn't believe that it was going, like, I was like, no, that's not actually going to happen. I remember being like, I'm gonna Google this just to make sure that this is the same person and there's not like a different, spelled differently or whatever. I don't know if you could tell, but there's a dog at my feet right now. I don't know if you can catch that, but uh, anyway, we're here. We're here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. My name is Peter Cadis, uh, but we're here to talk about the new Verso studio uh, in the Westport Library. I was lucky enough to get to record a song with a band from New Haven called Danny Probably. I had a lot of help from Travis, the engineer there. People think, oh, if you're a good band, you have a good song, you record it and it sounds good, but I, it usually isn't that easy. So the band came in uh, super prepared and the drummer did, a, I think, an absolutely fantastic job. And then there's a section in the middle with a little marchy snare, which is, you know, not the easiest thing to do sometimes. And it was just nailed it, perfect, you know. So, um, yeah, like I said, that I, I couldn't have asked for more from the band, sort of nailing it. And the singing too, you know, Danny's singing was pretty amazing. Just, I think there were, she did, I think she just did two takes and then like a harmony track. So yeah, nice job.
Yeah, not bad. The experience was unforgettable. If you, as an artist, have an opportunity to come work at Verso Studios, I think you should do it. <laughs> I mean, I've never been to this building, so when we came in to see where we were gonna record was like pretty breathtaking. It's a beautiful place. As soon as you walk into Westport Public Library, you can feel that it's special and that it's a space that celebrates the arts on display, you've got all the 3D printing. You just like instantly are in the headspace of like, this is a fun place to be. This is a place where you can play, where you can make things. I think it's great. You know, it's a sort of a proper control room. They have a nice Pro Tools rig. Uh, it has some really nice monitors, some ATC25s like I have right here. Lots of nice preamps, a nice little uh, controller there. Lots of great mics, almost a little overkill on some mics, which is great. I mean, it really is set up to, to record songs and make records if you wanted to. The track sounds like us. It, it really does capture the spirit of a live take, which was a lot of fun to be able to do here in tracking it all at once. You know, we didn't do it um, part by part. It wasn't laying down the drums, then the guitar, then the bass. We got to get a really cohesive performance and a cohesive sound. It's unique to us in terms of its quality of recording, like it is pristine and um, uh, a, a really beautiful sound capture um, that we couldn't capture on our own. The recording we ended up with sounds like nothing I've ever made before. I've been recording at home for 15 years, all self-taught. I've invested some of my own resources into my own home studio because I, I love to do it and I like to be able to have that independence, but I, I don't have the expertise and I don't have um, the wealth of equipment to really capture the sound the way I want to capture it or to bring a production to the level that I want to bring it to. I can make a great demo and that's it. It was awesome to watch professionals do what I enjoy doing and really like glean a lot of great information from them and they were always open to questions or tried not to bug them too much but I couldn't help sometimes asking you know why this mic over this one and all that and they, they just were a wealth of information, it's, uh, you know, miles beyond what you could do at home. As a local musician, I have worked with Travis before in different capacities, and it's always exciting to see people that you know from a more DIY space in such like a consummately professional, cool environment, just rising to the occasion, knowing what they're doing. He's easy to work with, no fuss, no muss, like great at what he does, loves technology, like really loves gear and loves what he does. To me, it really speaks to the potential and the power of what a library can be in a community. Libraries bring so much to the spaces where they exist. I mean, the first things that come to mind for me are like support with job applications, having somewhere you can go read a book, get a book, access a computer. They are places to me that represent equity in a community, um, especially of technology access. And Westport Public Library takes that to another level by having a studio space where artists can come and express themselves well, I think it's a great place, right, for young bands in the area uh, and also young engineers or, you know, potential producers uh, to try to do their thing, you know. Um, there's a surprising amount of, of, of young people, I mean people in high school, who uh, have already really taken an interest in, in studio production stuff. That takes some real determination to, you know, walk into a, a new situation and with a lot of complicated stuff. I can't think of any other place like that at all for young people. I shouldn't act too impressed that, that Westport is this forward thinking, but I think it's great. They're having shows there now with, with uh, I guess, I guess I shouldn't use the term real bands, but real bands. And, uh, and now they have a real studio. So uh, yeah, who knows what's next? We'll see. Oreo, what do you have to say? What do you have to say here? No? Thank you and good night. Good dog. That's a good dog.